Well, good evening, everyone. Scripture says in the book of Acts, chapter 1, you shall be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other ones, parts of the earth. And part of the commission of the Lord, it, there, the great commission is given every one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the one given in the, in the book of Acts is that one there. But wait till you be endued with power from on high. Part of what we have uh, endeavored to do in, in ministry here is, is uh, have uh, the gospel go out, Palm Springs, Coachella Valley, and uh, to other most parts of the earth. As you know, we have started churches in other countries. We've, we've done things in Mexico. We've done things in Europe. And uh, uh, we're, the current vision that I feel the Lord moving on us now is to consolidate things and to do things here at home. Part of what our church council feels very strongly about is the need uh, to train Christian leaders. The Christian leaders of tomorrow, train them today. We start at kindergarten, we go all the way through high school. Now that's soon to change. We're going to start an institute uh, beginning in the fall. And our goal is to mentor uh, young men and women who want to go into ministry. We're going to do that in an accredited fashion. And uh, so we're, this is kind of an unveiling of part of what we're going to do. We're, working, we're going to work in conjunction with either COD or Life Bible College, and so people can get trained, be, be here, and do things here. And so we're excited about that. My vision is to, I'd like to see the Desert Chapel in every, every city in the valley. I'd like to see a Desert Chapel, Cathedral City, Desert Chapel, Rancho Mirage, Desert Chapel, Palm Desert, Desert Chapel, Indian Wells, Desert Chapel, you get the idea, right? I'd like to expand, and, and the goal is the gospel. Starts and then begins to spread out. And it has to be something that, it, wait till you get endued with entire power from high. It has to be something that is inspired by the Spirit of God and something that is, is fanned uh, by His Spirit. So begin to spread, our goal is to spread the gospel. So we are, we are we've just, we, I just made this decision, we've just made this decision, we've been talking about for some time, but when I was in Portland, one of the reasons I was in Portland was about this, about how we can do things. And, and uh, they gave me the green light and said, go ahead. We wanna, you want to commission people for ministry, we're going to do that. So we're going to do a two-year program, four-year program. But the idea is to spread the gospel out and to train uh, young people. And we're going to have them now from kindergarten all the way through high school. Some of the high school students are thinking, oh, no, i got to go to Desert Chapel, the college too. And, and, uh, but that's, there'll be some that'll hear, be some that'll be... Uh, from other parts of uh, our nation. In fact, when I was talking to uh, our district rep in, in Los Angeles, she said, well, you know, uh, we'll send people your direction. So I don't know what that means or how many we'll have, but we're excited about, about uh, having something new launching, launching there. Uh, this next week, we're going to launch uh, uh, a young guy who has done things a little bit differently from, from, uh, from uh, what you'd expect, but that's the Lord's way. He doesn't always do things in the anticipated and expected way. Uh, John Comco, John, you and your folks came here from the time you were like uh, five years old or six years old, like that. And and uh, John has a real heart for ministry. And uh, we had nothing, we had no specific plan. In fact, he's part of the reason why we're doing what we're doing because he's so out of the box. We didn't even know how to form a box around him. <laughs> Because John had a heart to go into uh, to, to Korea, which he did last year, and uh, came back and said, "I want to start a church," and so his dad's here. And uh, hi, Paul. Nice to see you. And and they are they have uh, they're going to start a church in Handel, Missouri, uh, this fall. In fact, you're leaving this Wednesday to go back there. But this is the kicker too. He's going to not only have uh, a, a uh, church there, but he's going to start a, a, an institute of Korean students who want to get trained in how to be missionaries in the English language. You can talk a little bit more about this, but so far, as I understand it, we've got 100 students that are planning on coming here in the fall, and I'll let you tell the details about that. What I'm telling you is this, that uh, when God raises somebody up, uh, it's the Spirit of God that trains people. It's, it's been my experience that uh, uh, Degrees are great, but people die by, die by degrees. And I've seen, I saw more fallout when I was going to grad school uh, and, and you know, people that just lose the fire and lose as they get educated, they get educated out of their faith. Which is, and it doesn't have to be that way. And part of the reason why I think that happens is because 
the Bible says, unto him be glory in the church. The glory resides in the church. And so when you raise up leaders from the church, they go from the church to another church. There's power in that and, and great things happen. All that to say, we're excited that John is leaving. Um, we're not excited you're leaving on Wednesday, John. <laughs> I'm excited for the ministry you're starting. And I'm excited to send you on Wednesday. And so why don't you come up here and so I can get my foot out of my mouth and uh, tell people exactly what you're going to do and how we got to this point. Welcome, John. Would you please? John Tomko. That's just the way to leave the Coachella Valley, right in humiliation. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Fred. You know, you covered most of my notes. I don't know what I'm going to say now, but I'm just going to give this all to the Holy Spirit. But um, it's funny how uh, Pastor Fred mentions that I've been in the church for a pretty long time, as I was actually driving on my way over here from the Korean church in Palm Desert, where I also serve at in ministry, I was thinking, man, how long have I been at Desert Chapel? And so I started counting the years. I was like, okay, so I was in the elementary program with John Evans, and then I went to the high middle school program with Joe Donaldson. And so I've been in this church for over 15 years. I thought, wow, I'm getting old. <laughs> and I can't believe this is all happening. But here's the thing that is very interesting, though, as growing up in my childhood, my parents, the Tomko family, would always take us to church. We would do a Sunday school program. Going to church is something the Tomcos always did. Now, when I was in the middle school program, uh, understand, I was a very strange, strange kid, okay? I was the one that none of the other kids so socialized with, and I was the one that was always 20 minutes early, lining up the chairs from everybody who messed them up the last service, and then always in the front, singing and getting all the right notes and everything, and so nobody really wanted to be around me. But the tricky part was is that when I was in the uh, middle, middle school program, at Sunday school, I was just like, man, this is so boring. This is so boring. I really want something else. And I said, Dad, can I just not go to middle school program anymore? He's like, no, you're a Tomco. You go to church. You go to Sunday school. There's no discussing it. So I sinned. My family goes into worship service. And this is the thing I love so much about growing up in Desert Chapel. There's so many people. There's so many people. So what I wanted was more education in scripture. I wanted to get deeper and deeper in the word. So this is what I did. Okay, follow me. So my parents go into 930 service and everybody swarms into the church that you see at 930 service. And it fills up, fills up, and it's really full. And my dad drops me off and he says, okay, John, go to Sunday school. I'm like, okay, dad. So he goes inside and I'm waiting outside the door and I see him and my, parent and my mother go into the church. I wait about five minutes for them to find a seat, and then I sneak out of the middle school program. I go into the sanctuary with the mess full of people, and for, I think it was about six years, I was cheating and listening to Pastor Fred's sermons in the sanctuary, and nobody noticed. <laughs> it was really awesome because I got so much out of Pastor Fred's messages, and like my life was changed from that point because I got to learn so much more that I wanted to learn out of God's word. And so here I was, and I'm just like this kid. I always sat right there, and all of these adults are looking at me like, you're not supposed to be here. But I was there because I wanted more and more of the word of God. In Philippians chapter 2, it's one of my favorite verses that you'll find if you turn and open your Bible. This is a verse that Pastor Fred uh, taught in a message about two years ago, and it's just been it keeps coming back to me and back to me. It's one of my favorite verses, Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 13, and it says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. That's one of my favorite verses because that verse right there shows that it's a process. It's a growth experience. When you are baptized and you're getting into church and you're going and doing all the Bible studies and everything, you're not transformed immediately. You're not righteous like an angel from the spot. I've accepted Jesus. I'm good. Sealed. Done. 
That's not how it works, and that's not what this verse says. It's a growth process. It's a time-consuming process. And through this process, I was able to grow, grow, grow. And the key was reading God's word, absorbing God's word, committing it to my heart. Not only just committing it to my heart, but walking in the word, being an example of God's word, be an example of Jesus, be a light in a world of darkness, as scripture says. And so as I'm learning more and more, I just decided, you know what, this is great, I'm absorbing God's word, and I just can't wait until God transforms me into what he wants me to be. And then something happened. I got into high school, I started lessening my time at church, and I started getting away from God. And this happens This happens. There are times in our walk with Christ when we get discouraged and we have trials and temptations and tests and we think that God is no longer speaking to us and God is no longer having his hand upon our lives. But that is not the case. God is always with us. We are the ones who decide to turn away from him, okay? But then I was struggling and struggling and I was so ashamed of my sin. I was so ashamed of my sin that I thought, I could not be redeemed. I couldn't be forgiven because I started out as a Christian. I started out at going to church in Sunday school. And now that I've walked away from God, how can I possibly be forgiven now? I'm not worthy of it. Turn to Romans chapter 8. And this is something I did not discover about my Christian walk up until five years ago. Five years ago, there was a massive turning point, and it was because of the book of Romans, and this verse explains it all, Romans 8, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Wow! There's no condemnation to those who walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. God has preached forgiveness all throughout the New Testament when he's used the apostles' writings, when he's used Paul in his journey through Acts and through all the epistles. There is something that is paramount in the scriptures, and it is his love and his forgiveness. And I thought, I'm not worthy of it, and that's exactly what the enemy is going to do to you. He's going to say to you, you're not worthy of God's forgiveness. You're not worthy of his his love, and that voice attacks you because we're in spiritual warfare. But there is no condemnation to those who walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. So, what was the problem with Israel all throughout the Old Testament? They would reject God, worship false idols, and they would think that they were no longer deserving, but when they turned to God, they were forgiven, and God had his hand upon Israel once again. All I needed to do was stop living carnally in this world. Just actually stick to it and realize that there is no condemnation for me because I walk in the spirit and I make a firm decision not to walk according to the flesh, not to be carnal, but to be righteous. And then when that pivotal moment happened, I started going to Bible college. I started getting active in the church. And then this growth process inside me started happening. And I started swearing less. I started thinking uh, no longer sinful thoughts. And then all of a sudden, this joy that people set kept saying to me, John, there's just this joy that radiates from you. You're just always so happy, and it's infectious. And I'm like, boy, I don't know what you're talking about. But it's what God does to you. Through sanctification by the power of the Holy Spirit, he changes you. But what is the key? Keep the law. Keep the commandments. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And be transformed into Jesus. Be transformed into his image. And have the transformation and the renewing of your mind. And so... There was this moment where I said, Lord, I'm just such a Jesus freak. I want to do everything. I want to go, uh, uh, tell me what to do and I'll do it. I just want to serve you with all my heart. And he answered, go to South Korea. (laughs) Why? I didn't even know anything about South Korea. I didn't know anything about the Korean people. And then all of a sudden, just these random people that I don't even know start popping up and say, hey, 
we want you to go to South Korea. There's a mission for you there. And I'm like, boy, I'm not sure. Let me pray about it. They're like, no, you need to go to South Korea. This is a great spiritual experience. And I start praying about it. And I'm just like, Lord, I need an answer. And you know what happened? In the month that I prayed about this opportunity to go to South Korea, the Lord did not answer me for 30 days. I prayed consistently. As Daniel uh, writes in the Old Testament, he says that he prayed and fasted consistently and did not give up. So following scripture, Scripture, instilling the word of God in my heart, following scripture and not giving up in my prayer, not giving up in the hope that God will use me and answer me. He finally gave me an answer and it was like right here, right on this platform. I'll remember it all of my life because it was the most powerful experience of the Holy Spirit that I've ever had. And I pray I have another like it and that it comes again, but I stood up here with Missy and the praise team, and we were closing out worship, and Pastor Fred asked people to come forward in prayer, and we were here for 40 minutes praying for people, and the Holy Spirit just came in, and we just couldn't stop. We kept singing praises. We kept praying. We just didn't want to leave. We just wanted to keep glorifying God, and then all of a sudden, as I'm singing in that mic, everything around me goes deaf. I can't hear anything. I can't hear Missy. I can't hear the band. I can't hear anything. And then I just step back for a minute, and I just feel these tears streaming down my face. And I'm not crying. What's going on? Am I having a malfunction in my eyes? What's going on here? And then all of a sudden, I just feel the Holy Spirit speak to me. And it was so loud and profound. And understand that God will always speak to you through his word. He will always speak to you, and it will always align. Whatever the Lord will speak to you, it will be consistent with scripture and he said to me I am this is one of the words of God I am the same yesterday today and forever I am going before you there are people who are running from me and I am sending them to you don't be afraid and that was the confirmation to go on mission in South Korea. And that's the best confirmation that you could ever have. Because I went to South Korea by myself. I went with no mission team, no friends, no family. The best part is, is that I knew nobody in South Korea. I, I'm practically becoming an automatic nomad. And so I fly on this plane, and it's descending in South Korea, and I look at all of the Hangul writing over all the buildings, and there's no English anywhere, and I am saying to myself, I am in real big trouble. There's no one here with me. What am I going to do? But then I thought about it, and I remembered Scripture in the book of Acts when, on Paul's journey to Rome. God promised him that he would get to Rome. And Paul had the attitude that he didn't care what happened to him because God said in his word, and his promises are always true, God said, you will get to Rome. And God said, I will get to South Korea. I will fulfill the call and the duty that the Lord has placed on my life. So I said to myself, I'm not alone. The Holy Spirit is with me, inside me, and in me, and moving, and using me in such a capacity to make disciples of many nations. So I stayed there and did everything that the Lord commanded me to. And it was hard. It was very difficult. I had to learn the Korean language. I had to stay in an apartment that's the size of Desert Chapel's men's bathroom. I mean, it was just really, and I missed my family. I missed my family. I missed my friends. Can I tell you, even though some of you might not know who I am, I missed my church. I missed the people here because I grew up with you. I grew in the faith with you. And when I see you, you help me to grow and keep God's statutes and commandments because I will not forsake the fellowship of the brethren. And so now that I have finished my mission to South Korea, I came back and said, Lord, what now? Once again, the Lord did not answer me immediately. And so I just stuck around, and he said, I want you to serve in the Korean church in Palm Desert. I want you to serve in Desert Chapel. I want you to consistently move in the local church, and I want you to stay put and wait on my word. So this is what I did. I stayed put. I waited on his word, and I've had such a blessing being here for the past five months just doing all that I can in service to be a servant of all, a servant of the church, and it's been so much fun. It's been so much joy, and it blesses me, and it gives me a peace that surpasses understanding when I am in the church 
fellowshipping and worshiping with you. I wish that Desert Chapel was like South Korean churches and we had Dawn worship 5 a.m. every single day. Wouldn't you participate in that? You don't sound too eager to do that, do you? Come on. But we don't have to be in a building to worship God. We can worship God anywhere, every day. And you know what? I'm weird in the way that I am 23 years old and I love hymns. I love the old time music and I love the new time music. But every morning when I wake up, something that Pastor Fred taught me is when you wake up, start your day with the Lord. And so I would sing in the shower, something I'm good at. And I would just sing, sing, sing. And this is what my Uh, When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries, may Jesus Christ be praised. And I'm singing this song inside the shower, and I am pumped, and I'm ready to get out in the world because I am making the direction of my day with the Holy Spirit. I am making the direction of my day in faith. I am making the direction of my day in righteousness. And this is what all of us must do. We must continue to remain close to God continue to remain close to this spirit because I notice that when I'm away from the word of God and I stop reading and I stop praying, I notice that I get frustrated in my members and I get angry and I get all of these sinful emotions and I'm wondering why am I feeling so bad and then I remember that I haven't been in God's word. I haven't been spending time at the hands and feet of Jesus Christ and there was one time I always remembered when I was in South Korea I was totally tired. I was working a very hard day uh, doing worship and there was this was the schedule 5 a.m. dawn worship 7 a.m. 8 a.m. 9 a.m. 11 a.m. 2 p.m. and then my English worship service that I taught at at 4 p.m. and then I finally get home at 6 and I am done I am tired I am exhausted but I get into my apartment and I see on my bed I I just want to tune out the world and I just want to relax and I see on my bed two items I see my laptop and I see my Bible And my instinctive reaction was to watch a movie on my laptop because I just wanted to relax and calm down. And then I saw my Bible, and it was just like this massive heaven-opening moment for me because I saw, John, are you going to waste your time on things carnal, or you are going to absorb the things which are eternal? If I watch a movie on my laptop, does it benefit me at all? No, it's a total waste of time. But if I study God's word and I absorb the word of God into my life, it changes me. It betters me. It makes me into a molding of righteousness. For all scripture is given for reproof, doctrine, correction, that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the most amazing book on this earth. In here are the secrets of the universe from beginning to end. And how is it possible that I would not want to spend my time in this book? Knowing, first of all, the history of Christianity, the history of the origin of God, but also the fact that I am reading words that God spoke. The Gospels, the Gospels, this is God, creator of the universe, savior of the world, speaking to me speaking life into me, speaking wisdom and righteousness into me. This is sanctification, people. This is us being changed by the Holy Spirit through God's word. And we grow and we get stronger. But there are times when we are weak and we get discouraged. But the Lord allows us to come to him. There's a verse in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, that says, this is a faithful, uh, faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I am the chief sinner. We are the chief sinner. We don't deserve God's grace, but that is something that he gives willingly and freely. And you've all heard this. You've all grown up in this. You know this. So why are we here every single Sunday Because we get discouraged, because we fall short of the glory of God, but God is always there to refill us, and the church is there to refresh us by the power of the Holy Spirit that we may be regenerated and refilled for what comes next. So in all of this, I said, Lord, what do you want now? And this is what he is doing. The Lord is sending myself 
and a couple of individuals to Hannibal, Missouri, where awaits us a donated middle school building of over 38,000 square feet and over 30 classrooms, a gym, an auditorium, and he has given us the vision to plant a church and a mission school, a school for evangelism. And already the Lord has provided 100 students that are coming in September for the fall semester. What is going on? The Lord is providing in such an amazing capacity, and I'm only 23 years old, and I'm going to be launching this church, and I am terrified. I am terrified because I am a teacher who will be judged more harshly. I don't want this. But, but, the Lord was with me growing up. The Lord was with me in South Korea. The Lord and the Holy Spirit will continue to be with me as he continues to be with you. Lest we forget when we struggle and when we're scared and when we're worried, we can turn to him and he answers us and he gives us this amazing peace that I can't describe. I just know that it's God within me moving in my life. And so now I can see that The vision is all of these people coming into this place to be missionaries in South Korea, North Korea, Asia. And I say, Lord, if it's your will, then you're going to provide what's needed. He provided a building. He's currently providing funding. He's providing students. And as of last week, he's providing teachers. And all of this is just coming together so perfectly. And I just say, God, you are so good. You are so good because when I am worried, I see you in my life and I see that if I'm not walking in your way, just show me. Show me if I'm not walking in righteousness. Prove to me, show me that I am in your favor. And he shows me. He continues to provide. He continues to speak. And he continues to bestow his grace through his word. All of this said, This is what we are designed for. We, as people created in the image of God, are designed for worship. We are designed to carry out the Great Commission. We are designed to share the gospel. Jesus saved your life, and he has given you the gift of eternity. How can you not keep it to yourself? You have to tell people about this amazing thing that Jesus did at Calvary. You have to tell people about this amazing thing that the Holy Spirit has done in your life. He's blessed you. He's prospering you. And though you may think that he's not blessing me in things carnal, he is blessing you in things eternal. What is more important to you? Is it a Mercedes Benz? Is it a large house? We have seen in our economy what that kind of attitude will do to us. Wanting something that we should not have at that time. God creates us to prosper in him, to worship him. And so when I worship him, when I spend time in his word, I am content. I have a want for nothing. And the Lord gives, and he gives greatly. And he says, John, I want to give you this massive building. I want to give you this ministry. I want to give you all these young people to mentor and to transform into disciples and missionaries that they may share my gospel throughout Asia and the world. I am giving you this, John. I don't deserve it. He says, I know. But I have a plan for your life just like I have a plan for everyone else, because you have surrendered to me and you have surrendered to my word and you are growing in righteousness, I will bless thee. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him, them who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God wants to use you in a great capacity. If he can use a guy like me young, inexperienced. There are no letters before or after my name. I am a young man who has grown in experience in ministry. And God chooses to use me. He chooses 
to use you. And he will use you. All you have to do is surrender. It's the hardest thing that we have as people. We rely on our degrees. We rely on our experience. We rely on ourselves too much. But God calls us to humble ourselves. And he looks at us and says, look at you carrying this heavy burden. Why are you carrying this on your shoulders? When I can help you, all you need do is ask. Ask and you shall receive. And you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your worldly pleasures. This is written in the book of James. God's word is expository in our lives. And he blesses us through it. He's blessed me with this ministry, and I don't deserve it. I don't want it. I'm too scared. But the Lord uses me, and all I need to do is surrender to him, and he will handle the rest. Growing up in this church, there are so many people that I'm going to miss. But then I think, there are so many people in the future I'm going to get to know. There are new friendships that are going to be made, and people are going to get saved. And lives are going to be restored. And people are going to be changed forever. And they will go forward and change others forever. It's this amazing process that God has designed. From the beginning of the church in Acts to today, the church has grown in over 2,000 years from 12 guys into 12 billion. It's amazing what God has planned. It's amazing what God has for us. How can you keep it to yourself? Share the love of God with others. Share what Christ has done with you, what is doing in you, and it will be infectious. The Holy Spirit will be infectious to everyone you come in contact with. What do you need to do? Walk according to the Spirit, not of the flesh. Surrender to God, and he will keep you in his loving arms, and he will use you in a mighty capacity. That's all I've got to say. I, I, I could speak for an hour more. There's just so much in God's word that I could just share, but there's just not enough time. But God is going to use each and every one of you. He wants to use each and every one of you. He wants to bless you in a way that you at the time right now don't understand. But it will happen. All we need to do is surrender. I thank you for allowing me to be here, to grow up here, and be used here. God bless you. Let's stand together, please. John, I want you to come down here. I'm gonna, I want to give you a verse. Would you come down here in the center? And, and I'm going to ask uh, some of the brothers to come down, Daryl and uh, some of the council. Yeah, thank you. MC, come on down, would you please? We need some more. Jim, yeah, Scott, Joe, thanks. Lester, thank you. Here's a scripture I want to give you. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let no one despise your youth. There is something infectious and contagious that just happens with uh, young people. But be an example to the believers in word and conduct, in love and spirit, in faith and in purity. And do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. presbytery. That's what we're going to do right now. Meditate in these things, give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. So I'm going to ask, uh, John, you got some oil there? And I'm going to ask you guys to get together. Would you just put your hands on him? <clears throat> Let's agree together. In fact, you know, he's going to leave, he's leaving us, but we're sending him forth. You understand the difference between someone just leaving and dropping off the edge of the earth and Somebody being sent in the power of the Holy Spirit, according to the book of Acts chapter 13, and they sent them forth. We're sending him forth uh, to accomplish a purpose. So, Father, we thank you. If we thank you, Lord, for the blessing of this relationship that you put John among us. Thank you, Lord, that he grew up here and that you have uh, cultivated things in him that you saw from before he was even born. 
Thank you, Lord, for his heart for you. Thank you for his heart for the word. Thank you for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. And right now we send him forth in the powerful name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. We send him forth full of your Holy Spirit, Lord. And we, we ask, Lord, that you would, you would accomplish the purpose for which he's being sent. I pray, Lord, that ministry would in, abound in his heart and life, that you continue to keep the grace of God upon his life, that favor would happen upon him. He'd have favor with you and favor with people. They'd open doors for him in this new community, Lord, that you'd bring right relationships to him. And the Lord, you'd protect him from anything of the enemy. <clears throat> we thank you for your promise, Lord, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. We rise up and condemn now in the name of Jesus. And this heritage has all of his saints. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are going to, to use him exceedingly abundantly above all that he can ask or think according to the power of the spirit that works in him. And we release that spirit right now. I pray you'd continue to teach him, Lord, uh, in, in the word by your spirit. You can, you Lord, to lead and guide him in the way he's supposed to go and protect him in all of his areas. We thank you, Lord, for this institute that's coming about. And we continue to summon forth people who will come to be trained, to learn, to go out and, and be delegates around the world. And we, we pray, Lord Jesus, for, the, for the, the congregation that you're establishing. We summon forth people from the north, south, east, and west, even people that don't know right now, Lord, may you stir their hearts. May they be on the move now, and may they want to come. May they be hungry for your word and hungry for what you're going to do. And may you give them favor in that community, and may there be a, gr a growth that is only explained by the Spirit of God and the glory of God. May your presence reside in that building. May people walk in, and even as they drive by, may there be something different about it. And the distinction is the, the work of God, the hand of God on that place, and the power of the Spirit that will draw people to, to, to like a magnet, to be together as you fitly frame them, Lord, for the purposes you accomplish, we want to accomplish. And thank you, Lord, for the privilege of the, of the church. That you build us, Lord, that you want to you use us in a mighty way. May John be a one of many who will go forth to accomplish your purposes. We send them now in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen.